bobbing boil. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the final program in our series, The Golden Days of Radio. A complete list of all the stars who ever appeared in Variety Bandbox reads like a who's who of the stage, for it began during wartime when everyone was eager to do their bit and spare a few minutes to entertain the troops. Mind you, at the time, some of the performers might have inspired the question, who's that? For they were then on the threshold of their careers, not nearly so well known as they became in later years. For instance, in this edition, from February 1950, you'll hear a very young Dick Emery and Frankie Howard, the latter in a surprising double act with the film star Dirk Bogard. It wasn't uncommon for film stars to introduce the whole show, although Philip Slesser eventually became its regular presenter. In fact, I was called in at short notice to do it when Philip was taken ill towards the end of the series. Perhaps with hindsight, the format is a little restless and one feels it might have been better to have fewer acts that lasted longer. But there never was any doubt that Variety Bandbox was an extremely popular show, whether it appeared on the General Overseas Programme, the Forces Programme or the Light Programme. All part of our broadcasting past. <laughs> Welcome to Variety Bandbox. <laughs> How do you do, everybody? This is Philip Sessa speaking to you from the stage of a London theatre, presenting the people of Variety to a variety of people. The curtain's up, the orchestra are ready on the stage, so welcome, first of all, to Billy Turner. <laughs> First turn, those three youngsters who quite often started our show with a real swing with their accordion drums and xylophones are here with us again today. The melody of Party Your Face with Sunshine introduces the three imps. After that medley of Alexander's Ragtime Band and Blue Ribbon Gal, the three imps are going to play a special arrangement of a piece of British symphonic film music, Dream of Alwyn.
boy who's one of the many who came to radio via London's Windmill Theatre. We've learned to expect amusing patter in smooth and urbane style, as well as something quite remarkable in singing from Dick Emery. Hello. <laughs> May I say how very glad I'm to be back on... Uh... Uh, uh, oh, let me see. Uh, uh, variety band box. <laughs> it's really lovely, really. In fact, it's lovelier than lovely, really, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and Daddy, be frantic to be new. <laughs> well, now, ladies. Right, ladies and gentlemen, and dear listeners, you are listening, aren't you? That's good. <laughs> uh, well, tonight I shall tell you something of my life, and of my life, something I shall tell you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I shall tell you of the struggles, the hardships, the bitter disappointments, the story of a man who won through. <coughs> it's no use, I must get a room tonight, it's no good at all. And looking at me now, what do you say? I oh, know, it wasn't flipping well worth it. I beg your pardon, I'm, <laughs> I'm lapsing into the mother tongue again. I like lapsing, don't you? I know so many lovely laps. <laughs> now, now, Richard, don't be filthy. <clears throat> now, uh... Here I stand, R.G. Emery. R stands for Richard, and G stands for... Well, I don't like to say, really. <laughs> uh, but I must be brave. No, no, no. It's... it's um... Oh, no, I don't like to. <laughs> it's Gilbert. <laughs> now, where was I? Ah, yes. Um, uh, the story of my life. Well, you see, my life's a bit of a mess, really. You see, it all started when I drowned my grandmother. Not that I had anything against her, really, but it was quite amusing at the time. When I got home and told Mother she didn't like it, she said, Now, look what you've been and going and done. Whatever will your house say? Of course, my, uh, my parents were awfully fussy, really. After all, my ancestors go back to Noah's Ark. Not in the Ark, of course. No, we had our own boat. <laughs> yes. Naturally, my father cut me off with a shilling. Rather clever of him, really, when you consider how blunt shillings are. <laughs> so I... <laughs> So I went to live with my uncle. He had a very nice place in the country with a dog and a cat. Oh, I must tell you about the dog. It's a rather clever sort of dog. I asked my uncle one day, I said, uh, can he do any tricks? He said, oh, yes. He said he can play cards. I said, he must be terribly clever. He said, he's not. I said, why not? He said, well, every time he gets a good hand, he wags his tail. <laughs> then one day, uncle said to me, Dick, my boy, what you need is culture. So he took me along to a lecture on ancient civilization. The lecturer was speaking when we arrived. He said, now, let us go back to ancient Rome where the fountains play and the young ladies walk about in chiffon chemises. Oh, no, they don't, said Uncle. I repeat, said the lecturer, where the fountains play and the young ladies walk about in chiffon chemises. Oh, no, they don't, said my uncle. The lecturer was flabbergasted. In fact, I've never seen anyone flabber their gasp so much as he did. <laughs> You live in ancient Rome, he said. Blimey, said Uncle, I thought you said Edgware Road. <laughs> <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to take the index finger of each hand and place them in your ear holes, because I'm going to sing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
We'll keep a welcome in the hillside. We'll keep a welcome in the glen. This land you knew will still be singing when you come home, sweet home again. There'll be a friendly light to guide you for your return. We'll always pray. We'll kiss away each hour of longing when you come home again someday. We'll kiss away each hour of longing when you come home again I'm very glad to see our next artist once again, what with overseas touring, 3,500 miles in four weeks, entertaining our boys in BAOR, and one thing and another, it's all too long since we last had the pleasure of welcoming that clever girl band leader, saxophone and clarinet player, Ivy Benson. Ivy's put down the alto sax on which she played that arrangement of Smoke Cats in Your Eyes, and on the clarinet, she's going to play revival of a good tune, How High the Moon.
Romance in Song comes to us today from two well-known broadcasting artists, and although they've appeared on other programs in duet, they haven't previously given Variety Bandbox the pleasure of their combined talents. Here are Sylvia Welling and John Hanson. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now John and I would like to sing for you some of those lovely melodies of Victor Herbert. <laughs> I love a bear the pearl, for to wonder us to tell, tis a rapture that all a divine. Oh, within my tears are on, and call me, for thy love, the world could not have point in our program, we invite you into the consulting room of the eminent philosopher, Professor Francis Howard, famous for his ability to delve into the minds and problems of his clients. Here he is once more with his beautiful secretary. Hello, hello. I beg your pardon? I said hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> what matter with hello -y, hello -y? <laughs> We've used that before we... <laughs> Oh, she'll have to go. <laughs> now, Miss Medworthy, it won't be long now. 
It'll soon be next Thursday. Next Thursday? Yes, yeah, the big day. Isn't it exciting? Why, what happens next Thursday? We get our laundry back. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. It'll be so nice to see you wearing a real shirt front again. Why? So I can have my blotting paper back. <laughs> Mesworthy police. Decorum, I beg you. Now, as we have no clients today, we'll sort out the mail. Now, let Again! me see. I beg your pardon. Put him up, I said. Oh, dear, a daylight robbery. You've said it. I know, I heard me. Wait a minute. <laughs> In spite of that mask, I recognize the voice. So do I. I know. Ooh. It's Dirk Bogard. I <laughs> Ah, now, come along, Mr. Bogard. No, don't be so kindergarten. <laughs> oh, I must take that mask off. Dear, you've given me such a shock. Why, pretending to hold you up? No, taking your mask off. <laughs> fancy you creeping in here like a bandit. Yeah, just fancy. <laughs> <laughs> you even had a gun in your hand. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why, even if you were a bandit, I've only got a pound. <laughs> only a pound? Yes. Put him up! Hey! <laughs> come on now, put him up. Oh. Oh. We're being held up again. You don't want holding up, you want boarding up. <laughs> Never mind the wisecrack, just hand over that pound. If you don't, I'll let you have it. I won't. Here you are then, one pound. Ah. <laughs> I'll give you a receipt. Now, um... <laughs> now, please. Now, Mr. Home Guard. Bogard! Bogard! <laughs> uh, Mr. Bogard. Now, first of all, it's very wrong of you to come in here and point that gun at me. Is it? You should be pointing at Miss Medworthy. Yeah, loaded, too. Yes, yeah, she is. Do the best. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Well, look, that's what I'm here to see you about, yes. Professor. I, I'd like to speak to you in private. In here. private, yes. Could you get rid of Miss Medworthy for yes. me? Give me the gun. <laughs> Don't you dare shoot at me. Not in my new dress. No, Professor, not uh, no bloodshed, please. In Miss, in Miss Medworthy's case, it would be gin shed. Now. <laughs> now, police. Now, now, Mr. Fireguard. Fireguard! Oh, dear. I thought you'd fired. Now, Mr. Bogard, let me hear of your travail. Travail? Yes, travail. That means trouble, doesn't it? Yes. It does if you travel on a number seven path. <laughs> Miss Medworthy, partition yourself off. <laughs> Heavens. You wouldn't think I'd pay her a salary, would you? And she's just had it? She's got the money now? Yes. Pull him up! <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Uh, look here. What? Come on. Just yeah. get back against that wall, see? Yes. Turn around. Keep your hands in the air. Now give me that money. What, with my feet? <laughs> Look, now, don't mess about. Come on. Come along, Miss Unworthy. Medworthy. Look, just pinch the money, not my act. <laughs> oh, here you are. My salary. What's this, ten shillings? Ten shillings a week? Of course not. This is for the month. <laughs> is this all you pay her? Well, she had a short week last week, you know. She only worked six and a half days. Oh, I see. Well, you keep it, Miss yes. Medworthy. I'm sorry, my my mind went blank. I understand. You ought to. Yes. <laughs> you cheeky little cat, you. Now. <laughs> She's getting more laughs than I am. She'll have to go. <laughs> Ah, uh, Mr. Shingard. Oh, oh, God! God! Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Of course, of course. Now, listen, Humphrey. Dark! I beg your pardon? Dark! Oh, I thought you said dark. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, now, to business. To business. Now, shirk us not the work, Dirk. What? <laughs> what can I for you do? Through who? Uh, the new. Go on, next text. Well, you see, um, I, I played a gangster in, in, in a film called The Blue Lamp. Yes, yes, The Blue Lamp. You know the lamp that hangs outside the police station? Yes. Well, that's The Blue Lamp. I'm not surprised this weather. <laughs> but you see, the, the awful part of it is that... Yes? <laughs> since then, 
Well, every time anybody mentions money, I have to go and rob them. Oh, Look, what should I do? Should I stay in? Must I lock myself away until all this wears off? Will I always be like this? Can you help me at all? What should I do? How can I do it? When? Welcome to 20 questions. <laughs> Professor. What? Professor, please help me. Otherwise, I may do some terrible damage with my gun. Well, why don't you leave the gun at home? Why don't I leave the gun at home? Yes. Well, I never thought of that. Oh, of yes. course, that's all I've got to do, isn't yes. it? Leave it at home. Professor, you've cured oh, me. Oh, it's all right. That's just a friendly gesture. <laughs> uh, that'll be 50 guineas. <laughs> Yes. Well, I suppose it's worth it. Well, of course it is. Now you won't go round trying to get money for nothing. Oh, yes, I will. What do you mean? I'm getting your job in bandbox when you've gone. Get out of here! We've emptied the band box for today, and this is Philip Slesser saying goodbye for now. The program was produced by Brian Sears and presented by the BBC. Memories of Variety Band Box from 1950, bringing our series to a close. From next week at this same time, on Saturday evenings, we'll be looking forward to hearing Ken Bruce introducing a series of comedy classics, starting with a 1965 edition of everybody's favourite, Round the Horn. So this is Robin Boyle on behalf of producer Tony Wills, wishing you happy listening and goodbye from the golden days of radio.